it was a very small committee in the early days with a very strong, forceful chairman, Sir Charles Carouche. It was really his idea, and one of his daughters, Claire, who was an MHK at the time, took it through the House of Keys to actually produce an act. And from very humble beginnings, I think we could all agree it's blossomed into something quite remarkable. When we started out, the Minister for Education at the time was very annoyed that we criticised what was available for the schools. He took me into his office and he showed me a cardboard box with some Roneoed bits and pieces in it. And that was actually the sum total of what was being taught in the schools. Compare that to now, we have played a major role in assisting the Department of Education and continue to do so with enormous numbers of resources. As well, of course, as the books we've published, the DVDs we've done, and the outreach work, which is vital for the language and the music and the dancing. So many children now have Manx music in all its forms to learn. They don't have to go to English folk songs. They can use Manx music with the dancing and the workshops. It's just transformed everything. And we can see that now with the groups that are coming through. The young, brilliant musicians that are standing on the world stage at last we have groups that can stand against the Scottish and the Irish who for years have dominated the Celtic scene, but we are now in there holding our own. Back in the 80s, we kept saying, will you teach the Manx language in the schools? No, they haven't got enough money. In the end, Sir Charles Carouche thumped the table at one of our meetings and said, right, if that's the problem, we'll give them the money, and we did. So we paid for the first language officer Brian Stoll who'd just come back to the island and he started the whole Perry team and that has transformed the attitude towards the Manx language. That's the big thing uh, I think. We've we supported a lot of academic research. I know academic research is rarefied but without that as a start you can't take from that the more general publications to get the information down to the public and to the school children and we have spent a great deal of our budget doing that, helping the Manx history, archaeological digs, uh, uh, histories of the finance sector, tourism, mining, the church, we've done all that and I think those are milestones in their own right. I first got into video in the mid-1980s uh, when I was asked to do a video about the trains of the Isle of Man. I was working at Manx Radio at the time and we did our first video, um, that's when I had a lot of black hair and was quite slim and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I kind of got a, a, a bug for it and I've done lots and lots of videos since and we've been out recording also the island on video, not to put into programmes but for the archive because if you look back five, ten years you find the island has changed extraordinarily and roads that were there have gone and buildings have gone and people have gone and if we don't record this it will all be forgotten and our archive of course all of this is available on our fabulous website and that I think is a very important resource for the sentiment and for researching and just for reminding ourselves of, of where we're going.